right, we plan to record this session so that way it will be available to others who weren't able to join us live. Great. Jeez. All right. I think we're just about 1130 exactly. So I know others will be joining on as they continue on from maybe a previous session, uh, but we'll go ahead and kick off. Uh, my name is Abby Joyce and I'm an Associate Director of Enrollment here at John Carroll. Um, and this is the live Q&A session to serve as a follow-up to the Exercise Science and Sports Studies Academic Review. Uh, U.S. News and World Report ranked John Carroll number one in undergraduate teaching in the Midwest for 2020. That's because we strive more than what's required academically, personally, and socially, and empower you to achieve what others see as improbable. We recognize that lifelong exploration connects us to an endless discovery, wonder, and joy. So you'll graduate unafraid to pursue the unknown. And we have several of those highly rated faculty members here with us today. I'm honored to introduce to, uh, three different faculty members with us, uh, Brian Biggie, Brooke Turner, and Jackie Zera. So I will now leave this off to uh, Brian, Brooke, and Jackie um, to start with some questions and answers from you, our guests today. Um, if you have any immediate questions, please go ahead and enter those into the chat function of the Zoom call. Um, and we'll try to answer those to our best ability or rather the faculty will, will as well. A couple quick things to remember, if you can, please mute uh, your microphone, um, but please feel free to turn on your camera. So we would love to see some smiling faces join us. So we'll go ahead and get started. Great. Hi guys, welcome. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is kind of remarkable. I didn't really know how many people were gonna be signing on to this thing, but every it seems like every couple seconds, another, another name's popping up on the screen. So uh, thanks so much for taking the time to to do this. Hopefully we can answer the questions that you guys have. Um, I'm sure this is a stressful time for everyone and making sure that you know, you're making final decisions. Uh, and say it, Jake Novicki and I were talking a couple minutes earlier. He was up on campus. You know, Jake Scafidi, you and I have been emailing back and forth for about 18 months now trying to get you up for a personalized visit too. So uh, there's, some, there's some familiar uh, names up here. So welcome back if I, if I sat down with you in the past. Um, so I guess, you know, one of the things that would probably be easiest for, for people to do as we talk about stuff, Dr. Turner, uh, she's, she's in charge of all the sports studies stuff on campus. So if you're uh, looking at a potential sports studies major, um, you know, anything along those lines, you know, she's the expert in this industry for us. And Dr. Zara, uh, she, she is so instrumental in, in all things exercise science uh, from our, our area. And they can touch on... Um, you know, all the different expertise things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis in the, uh, you know, in the classroom and in the, and out in the university. Uh, you know, Dr. Turner is a volleyball coach for us as well. And then one of my biggest roles is I'm in charge of all the experiential learning, all the internships, all the, uh, all the field work and all the professional development and alignment with career services. So if it helps you guys and who you want to direct questions to or anything along those lines, um, you know, that can, that can help you out with that. But, um, Abby, maybe this is where you can help us a little bit. I have no idea. How the heck do we kick off getting questions from, uh, from, from people? We could probably just start, um, Brian, we could probably just start. We're getting, we're getting some questions in the chat already. So if you look cool. in the chat, we could probably just start addressing some of those. Abby, I don't know if that, if that works or. Yep, that is perfect. And I'll let you guys, if you want to keep the chat open. So if you want to pull questions that you can answer best, that would be the best yeah. thing to do. So I'm going to kind of combine Mitch's question about the MBA and uh, Dante's question about sports studies and sports management. So um, as far as numbers, Brian, I don't know if you, if you guys have tracked that, if we've tracked that in the past about how many students we have from sports studies that go into the MBA. But just to yeah. touch on that a little bit, um, do you have any idea number-wise? I got numbers. Go ahead, do your thing. I'll okay. put numbers out there so, at the end. So um, I've, I've taught in MBA programs in the past, and – the reason I'd say that is because it aligns very well what we're doing in sports studies with requirements for the MBA and what actually goes on in the MBA. Um, what sports studies does, and this kind of goes into the, the difference between sports studies and sports management, I wouldn't necessarily say there's a huge difference between sports studies and sports management. One of the biggest things is that it's housed in our department with exercise science and not in the School of Business. 
And that's because what we do with our department is we want the people in our, in our department mainly want to go into sports administration or sports marketing uh, or coaching, although we can do other things as well. Um, we teach and we teach and educate about sport as a product, um, about sport as, as, as movement and physical well-being. And so our students are able to go into Dr. Zara's area with exercise science, nutrition, strength and conditioning if they want, as opposed to if we were housed in the business school, it would be all finance, all accounting, all things about um, learning about businesses as they relate to corporations and say banks versus sports corporations, whether it's a gym, whether it's even physical therapy or um, a university. So we're just, we're teaching the same, very similar content as it would if it was the school of um, sports management in the business school, but all of our examples are more sport-based versus say the banking industry or the finance industry. Um, Brian, do you want to talk about the MBA? I think my point with that is that it aligns very nicely. You get a good foundation to go into the MBA from what you get in our curriculum from sports studies. So it's a very nice transition and you do take some classes from the business school and undergrad. And so it's kind of a nice natural transition into that fifth year MBA. As far as numbers, Brian? Yeah, so as far as numbers go, every single semester that we've had the sports studies program, um, there have been anywhere from two to five students that have continued immediately after graduation into the into the sports or into the uh, your MBA program. Uh, so much so, and, and this kind of alludes to what Dr. Turner was talking about with the way that uh, the programs kind of gel and mesh together. That number of two to five has actually expanded in a couple semesters to seven, where we've had students who were exercise science majors that decided to, to shift, and it was not so much the healthcare idea, but they wanted to go, then shift into healthcare administration from the experiences that they had. And so they went into the MBA program after um, after their graduation from exercise science. So our program really does a great job of gelling between the two. And, and like, like Dr. Turner said, we teach about the product, right? You, if you go to business school, you learn about business and then you apply that to whatever company like Sherwin Williams or, you know, or progressive insurance that you're trying to do. We teach about the, the product of human movement and human behavior. And so that's where they kind of link together. Um, and then those numbers anywhere from two to five. And when you include exercise science, we've gotten as high as seven one semester that have gone into the fifth year MBA program uh, for that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Zara, I see there's one about the curriculum and PT yeah. stuff. Uh, so one of the questions we just got was about uh, the exercise science curriculum and its criteria to be able to get into uh, doctoral schools like physical therapy. Um, and what I'm about to say actually also applies, whether you're interested in PT, so physical therapy, occupational therapy, uh, physician's assistant, medical school, um, any of those uh, pre-professional, I guess, sort of programs that you may be interested in um, if you're pursuing a degree in exercise science. So to answer your question, the curriculum for exercise science itself, um, just as a curriculum in biology, just like the curriculum for chemistry, are not a prerequisite curriculum for PT. What you have to do is you have to take the prerequisites that are listed for the courses. So we have a number of students and it's a high volume of our exercise stu science students who are going on to one of those aforementioned programs. And what we do is we create alongside their major and potentially their minor, um, a four-year plan that includes the prerequisites for applying for PT, OT, PA, uh, medical school, nursing, dietetics, all of those things. So traditionally, specifically for PT, that means a year of biology, a year of chemistry, a year of physics, um, and then a few other odd, odd other classes. If you're going on to PA, it'll also include uh, OCHEM, biochemistry, microbiology, things like that. So even, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily matter what your major is, it matters that you cover the prerequisites and we do have a high number of students um, who are pursuing those graduate level uh, entries once they leave John Carroll. So yes, absolutely, you can be an exercise science major and then pursue a physical therapy doctoral degree um, or any of those other health professions that I already mentioned. Uh, the next question that was along the same lines, is there an opportunity to get a certification like the CSCS, which is the Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist Certification? 
or a personal training certification? Um, the answer to that question is yes, there is. Our curriculum, um, we are recognized uh, by the National Strength and Condi Conditioning Association as a premier program. Um, we do have a strength and conditioning uh, preparation course courses that would prepare you for those types of certifications. Um, you can actually get a personal training certification without a, co a college degree. So we do have a number of students who actually, while they are at John Carroll, will pursue a personal training degree so that they can work while they're in college. Um, and that is something you can do at any time. Uh, you, but once you graduate or when you're in, actually in your last semester of your senior year, our curriculum prepares you to sit for the CSCS, again, this, the Strength and Conditioning Coach um, certification, or you actually can also sit for the American College of Sports Medicine Certified Exercise Physiologist uh, exam, which is another certification if you're looking to go more into the clinical field. Um, and those are both classes that our curriculum, or I'm sorry, both certifications our curriculum would prepare you for uh, at, to be able to take within your senior year. Um, so Brooke, I think the next couple questions are maybe more for you. Dr. Yeah, so um, talk, the question was, what would be the most common minor for sports administration? Here's the great thing about our department, and I think John Carroll as a whole, but especially our department, is that we are really able to tailor your education. Um, our department, as Dr. Zara was just saying, with exercise science, so many students go into all these different professional programs, um, graduate programs, doctorate programs after their degree. We have the same thing with sports administration. Um, or I'm sorry, sports studies, you can do so many different things with our major, and that's the beauty of it. We sit down with all of our students and ask, what are your goals? And we help, we help form the curriculum so that you can reach those goals. Okay, so whether it's an internship, which we can have uh, Biggie talk about here in a second, um, or your curriculum, your classes that you take while you're in sports studies. So my, the answer to that is, what do you want to do? So if you want to go ahead and be maybe a college coach or a high school or college athletic director, we might suggest that maybe you go into um, business as a minor or entrepreneurship as a minor. Um, if let's say your goal is to go into more sports marketing, then we may suggest it could be still business or potentially communications as a minor. Um, we have a lot of different options. Some students that want to be a head college coach they think that it's really important to go ahead and get that strength and conditioning background, for example, or understand the body a little bit more. And uh, so I think that that's what's really great about our department because I was a college coach for 10 years and I would have loved to have been able to sit in on some of the classes like Dr. Zara has while getting my sports management, sports studies degree and knowing a lot more about strength and conditioning. So maybe some of our students go in if they wanna be a coach or even a college or even a professional scout to understand the human body, then they go in and take exercise science as a minor. So there's a whole lot of opportunities for you. Um, and I think that that's what makes it unique because we have such a diverse, um, a diverse student body in our, in our major with, with a lot of different needs and goals. And Brian, if you wanna talk a little bit about the internships. Yeah, sure. So uh, Katie and, and Jake, your, your two questions up here. Uh, what are the most common internships for sports studies and how often do students stay with that company in, in a job after graduation? And then Jake, yours, what are some jobs, volunteering opportunities on campus? Fantastic questions. Um, Katie, to your question about what are the most common internships, there's absolutely no way to answer that. And I'll explain to you why you know, with, with answering it this way. Like Dr. Turner alluded to in sports studies, and this goes to all of you with exercise science as well. There is no cookie cutter program that we have in, in, at John Carroll University for either sports studies or exercise science. It's about creating you, the individual. We are a formation program, meaning helping you decide what area of work you are most passionate about, where you think your strengths best lie, and where you want to pursue post-graduation, whether that be a professional school or a job in the market. And so the most common internships are the internships of people that are, have started to develop what it is they want to become. So we have a lot that do uh, work, and this, Jake, goes to yours as well, that we have a lot of students that work on campus, okay? A lot of students that do work on campus. Probably, just broadly speaking, that's where the most common ones are with the internships. 
because we're a Division Three athletic institution that tries to operate like a Division One institution and on a Division Three budget. So that means we need help. Um, and we have coaches and, and people in the administration that truly are educators first and foremost, and they want to help you learn how to become good at that line of work, if that makes some sense to you. So the places we have, Tim Robertson, our strength and conditioning coach, he has an, an unbelievable amount of students that help him, not only at John Carroll University, but Tim also runs a business, uh, Speed Strength, out in Chesterland, where he has people from the Weekend Warrior and actually modified physical activity all the way down to he trains people. He used to be LeBron James's trainer before LeBron got ready for the NBA. He's, he's uh, a trainer for a number of uh, people that are uh, Major League Baseball draft hopefuls and, and, uh, and NFL football draft hopefuls as well. So all the way from the most elite athlete of training all the way down to, you know, the weekend warrior and youth. He also employs our sports study students to do sport, um, to do uh, marketing uh, for him on online, social media type stuff. We have a number of students that work in our athletic training office, as well as a number of our students that work in our sports administration office, learning everything about the sport business industry, from ticket sales, to sponsorship, to fan engagement, to the administration, compliance, and governance structure of Division Three athletics. So the most common is probably on campus, only because from a number standpoint, that's where it's most diverse. Um, we have had every single semester a student intern at ESPN Cleveland speaking sports studies uh, directly. We've had every semester students intern, uh, multiple students intern with the Cleveland Indians. To your question, Katie, about how often do they stay with the company after that job? Usually not often, with the exception of the Cleveland Indians. We've seen the majority of our students that intern there. That's where we see them stick around longer. Uh, the rest of them, a lot of them look to go on for advanced degrees, especially in our exercise science world. Um, but those are, uh, that's probably the one sports studies company where we see that kind of transition of from intern to, to part-time seasonal work and then part-time seasonal work to the full-time aspect uh, from there. That's where we, we've seen it the most. But, you know, and, and again, this is just to echo what, what's been said. The sky's the limit for where you want to volunteer, where you want to intern. We are unbelievably blessed. You know, they talk about real estate being location, all about location. And John Carroll could not be in a better location from a sports study standpoint, from pro sports, as well as minor league sports within a 10, 15 minute drive. And then from athletic, uh, exercise science, you know, between the clinic, university hospitals, Metro, St. Vincent Charity Hospital, to all of the fitness facilities and uh, and private physical therapy, chiropractic uh, places that are in, in within a five to 10 minute driving radius as well. Uh, and a wonderful partnership with high schools uh, to get some really good hands-on experience, both from the athletic director standpoint and strength and conditioning coaching as well. So I just saw a question about study abroad trips. I'll just touch on that. Um, and if anybody has any more questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, we do have several students, I would say, from both exercise science and sports studies that are abroad every semester. Um, I think recently we've had a lot, Ireland has been very popular just from our students going over for an entire semester. So I'm guessing simply for the fact that it's relatively close, you know, it's not that, it's not this like 24 hour flight or anything. Um, and it's very safe and very rich in sport and in physical fitness. Um, so I think that the culture is, is there and, and it makes a lot of sense. Also, John Carroll has a lot of connections with Ireland with a lot of different schools there. Um, recently, this over spring break, Dr. Dr. Zara and I took exercise science and sports studies students, 12 of them, over to Ireland for the week. We did things from playing Gaelic games where they taught us how to play games and we participated in those. They taught us the culture of the Gaelic games. Um, we were able to go to two different universities just to see how they run their sports and their um, their sports studies or sports management programs, how they run their exercise science programs. The students have been able to, they were able to kind of get a, an idea of the culture of Ireland and just the rich history of sport there. I think it was very educational. I get some very good feedback from that. So we're going to try to do that every other year. Right now it'll probably be Ireland for at least another trip or two. And then who knows where we would go from there, but it's tied, that particular trip is tied into a course. So you get credit, whether you're exercise science or sport studies, a course called Globalization in Sport. So that while before we go on the trip, you're just learning about sport in different countries and how kind of the United States really is connected via sports and wellness um, to all the countries. 
and how quickly things kind of grow from country to country and how things like rules of the game changes based on other countries. And um, it was a really interesting experience for us. So we want to continue that study abroad. We work with our um, global ed office and really the sky's the limit. You know, we have connections, but also if there's something that you're interested in specifically, we work with the study abroad program, with the global ed program, and with that specific school, we look at curriculum and figure out how you could go there and how we could make it work. So again, that's very personalized and tailored as well that we could, if there's a place you want to go, we could really look into it and make sure that it makes sense for you. The opportunities are there, whether it's a, a faculty led trip or your own study abroad for the semester. And just to piggyback off that too, um, we have had a, a good number of exercise science, specifically exercise science students who have studied abroad, like Dr. Turner said, to Ireland, but also to Australia. Um, and part of it too is that a lot of the courses that they can get while they're over there can go either back towards our major. So uh, we just had one student study in Ireland for a semester last year. And she got a lot of electives, like really great health specific, health profession specific electives that she was able to bring back towards our major. Um, and a number of good prerequisite courses that have been able to be transferred and um, go towards uh, application to PT school and PA school. Um, and I think probably because their educational systems are somewhat similar to ours. Uh, so there's been some really good continuity of students being able, because one of the difficulties, at least for exercise science, is um, anyone will looking to pursue, you know, further schooling um, in PT, PA, anything like that, you're taking a lot of courses that are two course sequences where you have to take them in order in the fall and then the spring. So for example, anatomy in the fall, physiology in the spring, bio one in the fall, bio two in the spring, physics one in the fall, physics two in the spring. Um, and breaking that up with a full semester of study abroad can be difficult, but we've had a lot of luck with students being able to find courses up in places like Ireland and um, in Australia where they've been able to continue that coursework and not have to extend their plan of study, um, not have to take a significant extra number of summer courses to make up for it and not get off plan, more or less. So yeah, we've had a lot of success with study abroad more recently. Yeah. Uh, Drew had a question about athletic director. If you wanted to become an athletic director, what major and minor would you consider? Um, that varies. I would highly consider those sports studies as your major, um, a minor in business probably, and then going on to more schooling, um, probably get an MBA. Some people, there was actually a conversation that we had with our sports study advisory council last year, which includes the athletic directors at Ohio State, at Georgetown, we have an awesome advisory panel, an advisory board, if you happen to watch our, our breakout session. Um, but one of the questions we asked them was, as an athletic director at a big school, do you suggest that our students that want to be an athletic director go on to an MBA or a law degree, just because of all the, all the legal issues that come up in sport today? Um, they still, it was still overwhelmingly for an MBA, um, but also said that the, the law degree doesn't hurt or it doesn't hurt to have uh, a lawyer in your office to kind of to kind of have that counsel with you. So I would suggest um, sports studies major uh, with probably a business minor and then continue on to an MBA. I'm just going to jump in really quickly. Sorry, I just saw the question about the average class size. I just That's want to what I was going to answer. Oh, sorry, I missed that. No, yeah. I just know we have about, the average class size at John Carroll is about 20 students, but I don't know if it's a little different for either of your majors. So for exercise science, it really depends on the class. Um, some of our entry level classes are larger. Uh, lecture style courses could be larger, things like anatomy and physiology. Um, but we're very, very, very cognizant of some of our hands-on and lab-based courses being small. We have hard caps, no more than 15 students. Um, and usually they're more around 12 for our laboratory based courses. So I teach um, our exercise testing and prescription courses where every single day in class is a lab and we t I've had no more than 12 students in that class every semester. Um, and it's because to be able to learn the skills that are necessary on how to truly administer exercise tests, um, EKG analysis, things like that, you really need to have small class sizes. Um, whereas lecture style courses could be larger just based on the type of content that it is. It, it really depends on the class. Um, John Carroll has small, a, a really good student to faculty ratio um, in general, but when you look within our major, 
lower level courses tend to be larger, but as you progress in your major and you get towards your senior level classes and your upper level courses, they're going to be smaller and that's because the, the time that needs to be spent on a lot of the material and the hands-on nature of our, at least for exercise science, of our type of, um, of material, it really needs to be small class sizes and we're very good about that. And I know we're quickly running out of time. There was a question about the alumni network. I think that's one thing, um, you know, Dr. Turner alluded to the advising, the one-on-one -on -one advising. I think that's something that John Carroll stands out um, with in terms of helping you get to the idea of, of where you want to be, where you want to form yourself into. The other thing where I think John Carroll stands out more than almost any other institution is the alumni network. There's an idea of this, this concept of streets helping streets. And we can talk about how many of our successful graduates have gone on to do wonderful things in the world of sport. We have physical therapists, we have general managers, we have offensive coordinators, we have other coaches, we have strength and conditioning coaches. You can go down the line in every industry. We've got people that are highly, highly successful. They are constantly, A, back on campus, giving guest lectures, coming into classrooms, talking to people about their career path and what they need to do. They are, B, helping our students uh, with individual private interviews, helping them to know what they need to do to get into the industry, and then C, either providing or getting our students in touch with those who are in their network to get them experiential learning and to get them the skills that are needed to complement the knowledge that they learn um, in the classroom. So I would say, you know, it's as great as I think we do on, on, on so many different levels, that one-on-one -on -one advising and our alumni network are two things that truly stand out uh, for John Carroll uh, amongst, other, amongst other institutions. So there's two more quick questions here about the exercise science major I wanted to get to. Um, one about the required courses. Uh, so for exercise science, all of our students take uh, an intro level class, just like the sports studies class our students do. Um, and then they move on to things like anatomy and physiology, uh, typically during the sophomore year. There are classes in research methods for both majors. Um, and then after that, we start to move into some of the upper level courses like exercise physiology, kinesiology, exercise testing and prescription, um, motor learning, ethics. Uh, and then there, we have a space for four electives, and that's where you can really uh, tweak how you want your major to look. Are you going into healthcare? Okay, so then maybe you take um, a special population exercise and special populations class. If you want to go into coaching, you take strength and conditioning. Um, if you want to get more into working uh, with people with disabilities, you take a disabilities class. Um, so it really, your electives, are, or if you want to go into athletic training, then you would take care and prevention courses. Um, so it really depends on uh, your electives of how you kind of want to shape your major. Um, and then there was a question about the number of students that apply or, and get into DPT school. I don't have a specific number. Uh, my inclination is the number of students that by the time their seniors apply, the number that get in is pretty high. Um, throughout, I think a lot of students start their freshman years coming in saying, I want to do PT. Uh, and then, and they start as a biology major or they get to physics and they say, no, thank you. Um, this is terrible. I hate this. Or they, one of the great things is we have a great formation program where you observe starting in your freshman year and some students say, this isn't for me. Um, so a lot of people change their mind. Um, but for the number of students who actually end up applying as when they're seniors, I think the number of students that get in is quite high, but I don't know an exact number. Awesome. Well, you know what? Thank you everyone so much. It's all been wonderful questions. I was going to share really quickly, maybe if Brian, Brooke, and Jackie can each uh, throw their email address in the chat function. So if we want to direct any additional questions to either one of our faculty members today, um, you can copy that down. It's very quick and easy. Um, just to give everyone a heads up, starting at 12 p.m., we have two wonderful sessions, uh, the Bowler Professional Development live stream or the Center for Career Services live stream. So I think either direction would be great. Um, if you're really interested in Bowler, it might be a good opportunity to go into the Bowler-specific one. Uh, for those other students, Center for Career Services will do a phenomenal job. Um, once again, thank you everyone for joining us uh, this morning. We hope that you're able to continue on with our virtual celebration and we're really excited for you uh, to be possibly part of the class of 2024 at John Carroll. 
so thank you everyone. Thank you to our faculty for uh, presenting uh, really useful information today. Thank you everybody. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Appreciate your time.